Hello there friends and welcome. This video is all about the best loot you can find in Pathfinder's newly released DLC, The Treasure of the Midnight Isles. You can actually access it both from the main story and also as a standalone and I'll be focusing on the main story version for this guide. So yes, your main character and story party members will be able to benefit from these items. The first time you can access this DLC in the main story is at chapter 3, but you can also do it at chapter 4 and 5. More areas actually do open up for exploration at chapter 4 and then 5, and if you access it at chapter 5, you can explore all the areas at once. Some of the items here are actually the new best items for their types. So let's give it a go, shall we? And this guide will be in order of how early you can get these items. Let's get started then. Alright, so the very first piece of noteworthy gear is the Evercold Heavy Crossbow. Whenever it makes a first attack during a round, it actually shoots two bolts at once, which is quite powerful. Especially as crossbows can't really benefit from the many shot feet. Second, it even comes with a very nasty debuff. If both of the attacks hit, the target must then make a fortitude saving throw with a decent difficulty class of 25, or take an additional 2 to 6 gold damage, but most importantly, become staggered for one round. Staggered is a pretty nasty status ailment, and the enemy can basically only take a single standard action, which can heavily reduce the damage of demons with multiple attacks. Eventually the difficulty class is going to become rather low, but even then, it's still a heavy crossbow that fires two shots at once. As for the low enchantment, you can easily overcome that as usual by just casting greater magic weapon. You can find the Evercold heavy crossbow at the very first island in the first set. Second we have the Iron Prayer longsword. This longsword is very unique in that, first, Whenever you attack a demon with it, so most of the enemies in Wrath of the Righteous, it actually gains an extra plus 2 enhancement bonus to attack rolls, and this does stack with whatever enhancement your weapon has, including if you increase it to plus 5 through greater magic weapon, so this will result in a plus 7 to hit. Pretty much the highest enhancement bonus possible for a weapon in Wrath as far as I'm aware, including even higher than the ultimate version of Radiance, which caps out at plus 6. It also has a secondary property of dealing an extra 1d10 points of slashing damage on hit, quite powerful as well. The only issue I have with this is that as far as I've tested, this extra damage is actually applied separately, so it's somewhat easy for demons to resist it. I'm guessing this could be a bug or a feature, well, we'll see in the future. But overall, this is one of the best long swords in the entire game, and can certainly remain very powerful later on because, as I said before, it can easily become plus 7. Iron Prayer can be found right after the Evercode crossbow, so at the second island in the first set of islands. The third items I want to cover are actually a set. So we have the Guardian's Battle Axe, and then the Guardian's Shield. The Battle Axe is plus 3 and a Dementine, which is pretty good, as the damage reduction of some enemies can only be penetrated by a Dementine, including being able to kill the demons at Blackwater. It also gives you a plus 3 competence bonus to attack rolls on attacks of opportunity, that is actually doubled to plus 6, quite massive, when you combine it with the Guardian's shield. Lastly, your attacks of opportunity also do an additional 2 to 6 points of slashing damage. Stacking attacks of opportunity is probably the easiest way in Wrath of the Righteous to increase your damage output by huge amounts. You can easily get very big chains of attacks of opportunity by combining some teamwork feats such as outflank and weapons with high critical range for your party members. And your attacks of opportunity will be boosted by a huge amount with these two pieces of gear. The only downside of the battle axe is that, well, it is a weapon with rather low critical range, it only criticals innately on a 20, which can then be increased by 19 to 20, or higher if you have a trickster. When it comes to the Guardian Shield, well, it grants you immunity to prone, which is great because usually if your character gets prone, he's pretty much going to be killed. It even grants you an extra attack of opportunity, and if you combine it with Guardian's Battle Axe, it gives the axe the speed special quality. Speed can help because it basically enhances your attacks per round by one, the only issue is that it won't stack with haste. Both of these weapons can also be found pretty close to one another, so the Guardian's Battle Axe is at the 4th island, meanwhile the Guardian's Shield at the 5th island, so one after the other, and of course, as usual, for the first set of islands. Now, our 5th and 6th items are also part of a combo. 
first we have the rope of unspeakable truth. At the moment, the description is kinda misleading. It says it grants you a plus two circumstance bonus to wisdom, but the ropes themselves actually enhance your intelligence. When you combine it with the glasses of undeniable truth, your character will be given a 10 foot aura of fear. For a difficulty class of 25 plus your charisma modifier, for a high charisma character like an oracle or a sorcerer, the difficulty class can easily become higher than 40 for this aura of fear. And as far as the glasses of undeniable truth, they give you permanent truth scene, which is you know fine, but we can just cast the spell to buff ourselves for that. Most importantly, a plus two profane bonus to initiative rolls, so it's going to stack with all other initiative bonuses. And lastly, when combined with the robes, a plus two competence, like I said, it's switched. The glasses give it to wisdom, while the robes to intelligence. Because circumstance bonuses to ability points are extremely rare, this is basically an extra plus two to both your intelligence and wisdom that will stack with everything else. So perfect for both the wisdom and intelligence casters, including wizards and clerics. Even better to boost your domain powers. Also remember that because it is a robe, you can wear it even while also wearing armor, while retaining the bonuses from both. So the glasses of undeniable truth come from island number 9, meanwhile the robes are right after at island number 10. The hat of the bitter end is also one of the best pieces of headgear you could get for your characters. Whenever you slay an enemy, you get a plus 2 bonus to attack rolls for 3 rounds, which does stack with itself, so the more enemies you're killing, the more extra attack rolls you're adding to your character, which can eventually become pretty high. Of course, you know, for bosses and single enemies it's not going to matter that much. Still, for the normal enemies it can be quite great. You can find the hat of the bitter end at island number 8 from the first set. For the last of the powerful items that you can find during chapter 3 we have the broken trickster glasses. It grants you immunity to poison, which is fine, but most importantly a plus 6 bonus to both wisdom and charisma, which then frees the head slot for something else, as usually these bonuses come only from helmets and headbands. Also it has powerful tanking properties, whenever you take any energy damage, you gain 20 energy resistance for one round. But here's the best part, whenever you take physical damage, you also gain impenetrable 20 damage resistance for a round. Being able to shave 20 points of physical damage from enemies is pretty powerful. So overall this is a great addition for your tanks. It's only a pity that pets cannot wear it. The broken trickster mask comes right at the boss of the first set of islands. So in the last island, Alright, so for the second part of very powerful new DLC items, we have the ones that can be found at the second set of islands that unlock after you finish the first and also are at chapter 4. The very first is what is now pretty much the most overpowered robes in the whole game, the robe of the seven sins. If the wearer is a spellcaster, their castle level will be increased by a massive plus 3. This alone is already huge because most characters didn't really have a way of increasing their caster level besides merging with Angel or Lich. And now those characters can increase it by even higher. So my Angel Oracle here has 32 caster level. When I hit Mythic 10, it will become 33. Such a high increase in caster level means not only extra damage, but most importantly duration, which also lets you achieve 24 hours for your one round level buffs even earlier, through greater enduring spells. Anyways, the OP bonuses don't just stop there because it also increases the difficulty class of all your spells by plus one, and you even gain a plus five competence bonus to overcome spell resistance. The last part is not that important, but having plus three to caster level and plus one to DC is basically the dream of every spellcaster, so these robes are now a must and pretty much the best in slot. The robe of the seven sins can be found at the third island during the second set, of course. Alright, so the next item I want to cover is, surprisingly enough, a food recipe, the Lucky Hand Sandwich. I wasn't really expecting to find a new recipe, but here we are. So it provides you with a plus 5 cooking bonus to all skill checks, plus whenever your character has to pass a skill check, you roll the dice twice and take the better result. Plus 5 cooking to all of your skills is pretty good, especially depending on your character type, like a build focused on tripping or one of the trickster builds focused in, let's say, persuasion. But I still would rather have Demon Slayer soup and later our tasty tacos. However, remember that you can actually apply two food bonuses at the same time. The Lucky Hand Sandwich recipe is actually found at the same place as the Robe of the Seven Sins. 
We can also get another powerful clothing gear, the Cloth of Heavy Fortification, which grants the wearer heavy fortification. What this means is 75% chance of outright negating critical hits or sneak attacks that your character might have received. Sure, it's not 100%, but 75 is pretty high. And some of the enemies in Wrath, especially the late game mythic demons, can hit for absurd amount of damage on critical hits and sneak attacks. Also, because it is clothing, like I said before, you can easily keep it on heavy armor characters like Scylla here, while still retaining the bonuses from your actual armor. You can actually find around 3 cloths of heavy fortification, I believe, but the first one is at island number 6 from the second set. For another great item, we have the Rod of Magical Affinity. From the description, it seems that the intention is to be able to activate a rod and then cast your spell as if it were empowered, Titan, Bolster and Maximize at the same time, so four metamagic feats at once. And this should also work for level 9 spells. The only issue I have is, well, I tried testing this rod and I'm guessing it's a bit bugged at the moment, because I used it on my Storm of Justice, but was only able to get Empower and Maximize. The other two feats, Bolster and Heighten, didn't really apply. So I'm guessing this item is a bit bugged, but I could also be mistaken. Regardless, being able to combine four of the best metamagic feats, damage-wise, can be quite powerful. The only issue is, this rod only has five charges, and from what I have tested, as the descriptions itself states, the charges will not recover upon rest so you truly only have 5 uses. And a good thing is you can get it one chapter earlier than the infamous Grandmaster's Rod, which only comes at chapter 5. Anyways, to find the Rod of Magical Affinity, well, you just have to loot it from the 7th island in the second set. Now, the last of the items I want to cover can only be found at the 3rd set of islands, so during chapter 5. And both of them are pretty much the new best gear of their types. First, we have the snake skin leather armor. It increases your base speed by 20 feet and also grants you immunity to acid, which you know don't doesn't matter, but most importantly, a huge plus 4 profane bonus to dexterity. This is simply amazing as profane is also a super rare type of bonus, especially to ability scores. So we will stack with pretty much everything else. The only downside of profane, I suppose, is that well, for your main character, depending on their class, you can already accept Nocticula's Gift for a hefty Profane boost to two of your main scores, so if you are playing a Rogue class, you most likely would already have plus 4 or plus 6 Profane to Dexterity. Even then, you can still use Snake Skin for other characters, and Wrath does have a lot of Dexterity-based characters like Aru, Camellia and Regu, of course, for higher to hit and damage and even more armor class too. The Snake Skin Leather Armor is found at the very first island of the third set during Chapter 5. Lastly, we have the new best glaive in Wrath of the Righteous, Mutilated Angel. This weapon is pretty stacked overall, so it is a plus 5 adamantine glaive. Whenever you attack an evil creature, basically everything in Wrath, you get a massive plus 5 bonus to attack rolls, and also a huge 1d12 slashing damage on hit. The plus 5 boost alone is already amazing. It's really a neat increase to AB. Also, whenever you score a hit, you inflict a minus one penalty to enemy's armor class until the end of combat. This is irresistible, by the way, and it even stacks up to minus five. So consider you have plus five to hit, and then also debuff the enemy's armor class by another minus five, pretty much dooming the enemy for your entire party to hit. Overall, a top tier weapon, and certainly the best glaive possible. It does have a downside, however. It will debuff your character's charisma by minus three, which you know doesn't really matter for most characters outside of oracles and sorcerers. Mutilated Angel comes from the very penultimate boss of the DLC, which you can fight at the last island of the third set. Now for the true last part of this guide, I just want to cover some of the other useful gear you might find here. They aren't really the best or extremely powerful, but to put it simply, this DLC will pretty much make your characters rich, because you'll find an absolute huge amount of magical gear to sell, especially starting at chapter 4. Some generic items of note are Cloaks of Resistance plus 6, Braces of Armor plus 8, which are great for pets, Amulets of Mighty Fists plus 5, also amazing for pets, some Rings of Protection plus 6, which are actually higher than the maximum you can get from the Shield of Faith spell, and actually quite a lot of extra metamagic rods, 
including a few new ones. There's basically a lot of metamagic rods here, mostly the greater and the normal variants, up to level 6 and even level 9 spells. Because of how useful metamagic can be in Rehef, at the very least your spellcasters will be very happy by getting these. Well alright everyone, so this was it for my best items in the newest Pathfinder DLC, Treasure of the Midnight Isles. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe to help the channel grow, and even consider becoming a channel member. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!